In the continuation of his tale of two sisters, Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus, John the Gospel writer sets up a scene in which Mary breaks open a flask of ultra expensive fragrant ointment that took a year's salary to purchase and slathers Jesus' feet. And writes John, the fragrance of the perfume, the aroma fills the house. Today I want us to think about that aroma and where we have caught the scent. Judas, however, is horrified, indignant. For what you spent on that perfume, you could have given that year's income, that $80,000 to the poor, and really made a difference. Judas had a point. Didn't Jesus say, inasmuch as you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me? 80K worth of ointment. Isn't that a kind of Beverly Hills kind of act of thinking, something you'd see on the Kardashians? And indeed, John has taken a simple, unadorned account referenced in the other Gospels and expanded it into a reality scripture drama. This is not the first time Mary has pulled off something like this and provoked criticism. Earlier in John's Gospel, his tale of two sisters, her sister Martha is banging around in the kitchen trying to fix a nice Sunday dinner for Jesus. And that worthless sister Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet in rapt attention while he talks. Martha complains, don't you care that I'm left to do all this? I've heard people say that to me. <laughs> but Jesus says to Martha, Mary has made the better choice. Well, who of us good, hardworking, logical Americans could disagree with Martha? Who of us frugal, sensitive, thrifty, middle-class folk could disagree with Judas? In the brilliance of it all, they are expressing us, how we look at life. And herein, John the Gospel writer has us because he is turning our world, our sensibilities, our vision, our whole approach to living upside down. John is telling two tales, two stories. On the surface, it is about the man Jesus of Nazareth and his ministry and encounters, such as with Mary and with Judas. But the real story, the real story that John is pointing to us is of the Word of God, the Logos of God, the character, the personality of God eternal through all ages, through whom all things were made, who in Jesus has become flesh and pitched his tent among us, bringing God's grace and the truth of God as love, a grace and truth that brings life and brings it abundantly. That's the story of John. The rest is window dressing. On the surface, Mary is scandalously wanton in slathering that expensive perfumed ointment on Jesus' feet. But the truth is, she's able to see in depth to the real story. And she loves this Jesus. She loves recklessly and fully, so recklessly and fully that she gives all that she has, spending all that she has in loving compassion. As Jesus was about to spend all that he had, his own life, that we might know the fullness of God and of God's love for us and for the world. And as the fragrance, 
the aroma of this ointment fills the house, so this aroma, this fragrance of God's love fills the world through the cross as Jesus breathes out his spirit broken open on the cross. And whether you and I know it or not, we are here today because we have caught a whiff of that aroma. What the church used to call the odor of sanctity. And we have breathed it in and we cannot stay away because in this church and in this community, we have breathed in the fragrance. On the surface, Judas' criticism is well placed. That ointment could be sold and the money given to the poor. Who can disagree with that? But John lets us in on a secret. Judas doesn't care. That's the point. Mary cares. Mary gives her all. Judas doesn't really care. It's easy, it's comfortable to stand back and criticize and make a judgment because he doesn't care. He's not connected. But Mary is. Judas doesn't care, and despite his criticism, he doesn't care for the poor, notes John. Judas cares about the money, John says. Judas cares only for himself. This too has an odor, an aroma that fills the world, and many are drawn to this odor as well. We catch this odor all around us, and it is an odor, an aroma that drives so much of our life and our media these days. It's the odor of anger and anxiety, of self-promotion and jockeying for position. It's the odor of cruelty, wearing the mask of goodness. It is the odor that fascinates. I get fascinated by it. Breaking news, says CNN. And I put down my fork of peas and I stare blindly at what is coming. I stare with a bit of excitement at what might be unfolding next. And they know it because it drives their own economy. But I know in the end, it is the odor of death and decay and not the aroma of life. I know in the end, and we all know, that if that's the world we are to live in, we need something more. We don't want Judas's world. We want the world of reckless, lavish love. We want that aroma that Mary embodies. Well, the odor of Judas seems to dominate our life at times. It fills our nostrils, and it seems to drown out all the other aromas. It reminds me of that overwhelming stench that used to assault me as a child when we'd drive from New York through the industrial section of uh, New Jersey on the way from New York to Virginia. You know that area of the New Jersey turnpike where you have to hold your nose? But what a difference it was when we finally hit the Chesapeake Bay. You ever had that experience where you hit that Chesapeake Bay bridge tunnel and you're out in the middle of the water and you throw open the windows and you breathe in that beautiful aroma of sea and breeze and life. It's there all along, but traveling through Pohokus it's hard to fathom the fragrance that awaits you crossing that bridge tunnel. It's also hard for people around us to imagine the fragrance that they can breathe in of God's beauty and love as when they step into this church. I was meeting with someone yesterday who said, I've been, I've been looking at this church for years and when I stepped in, she said, 
It just was so amazing. I hear that almost every day from people in the community of all ages. I hear that from people who come in here and listen to the beautiful music like our friends from St. James School are honoring us with today. I had no idea that there could be a place this beautiful. I had no idea that coming here and being in the midst of this community would feel so much like home. I had no idea. That's the aroma of Mary. That's the aroma of Christ. And that's the aroma that is breathed through by the Spirit within this church. I caught that aroma also this week in an odd collection of people, of Christians and Muslims and Jews, religious leaders I've talked about him before, in the hands united in building bridges. And we talked about this. We said, we, we love each other. We love each other. Do we agree theolo theologically? Probably not. But we love each other. There is a passion in our group, and there is a passion to change the narrative from one of division and mistrust to one of a kind of reckless love that has decided not to make judgments, but to enter into relationship and become engaged with each other's life and story. That's the aroma that we want to fill the house of this world. Now going back to Christ in St. Luke's, and I'll close with this, many will say, well, why should we spend so much money on this building? Why should we spend so much money on music? Tear it down, give the money away. That's what a real Christian does. Not so fast. Is that Judas or is that Mary? How many lives have been transformed by the aroma of this place? How many souls have been transformed through the music? How many people have gathered Sunday after Sunday and found a home? Is that not worth all that we can give? Amen.